Certain politicians in the European Union appear to be intent on triggering a full-blown war with Russia on their territory, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev claimed. The comments came after German lawmaker Friedrich Merz, leader of the Christian Democratic Union and a contender to become the next chancellor, said he would back an ultimatum to Russia in which Ukraine would threaten to use long-range Western-supplied missiles unless Moscow agreed to a ceasefire. Merz stated that the delivery of Taurus would be anything but joining the conflict. The politician then claimed that deterrence has always been a threat and it is a potential aggressor that must be afraid of us. If we in the West are afraid to defend ourselves, then Putin has already won this war against us all by half. Merz argued, Scholz is obviously afraid and fear is a bad advisor, he said, adding that this was not just opinion but rather a conviction. Scholz has argued that such a move would make Germany a direct participant in the Ukraine conflict. In contrast, Merz has said that if elected chancellor, he intends to use the Kiev requested weaponry as leverage with Moscow. He would deliver missiles within a week if Russia rejected Ukrainian demands, he told the Stern magazine in an interview last week. Responding on Tuesday, Medvedev argued that the missiles would not change the course of the conflict but instead would increase by several times the risk of the conflict entering the most dangerous phase. Generally speaking, it is surprising how eager the current generation of European politicians are in inviting war to their territory, notably to the obvious delight of the Americans and against the wishes of their own peoples, added Medvedev, who currently serves as deputy chair of the Russian Security Council. Inflated egos have replaced the wisdom and experience that European politicians used to show, he claimed. Recall earlier this month, the German ruling coalition collapsed amid disagreements between member parties on future government spending. Scholz has called for a parliamentary vote of confidence in January. Depending on the outcome, he would either lead a minority government or call a snap general election. Baikova, Valentina and Cherednik Tatiana are pensioners from the Kursk region, abandoned by the Russian authorities. Ukrainian soldiers evacuated the women to Sudza. Their villages were bombed by the Russians. They say if it were not for the Ukrainian armed forces, they would have died of hunger. It was the Ukrainian side that provided water and food, reports Freedom Media Outlet. Cherednik Tatiana Sergeyevna says that she currently lives in a boarding school in Sudza where she was taken by Ukrainian soldiers to save her from shelling. We are alive, but our village is gone. We are now in Sudza, in a boarding school. The Ukrainians took us out, for which we are very grateful. When everything is over, I will call you back, Tatiana Sergeyevna says in a video message. Another resident of the Kursk region, Valentina Vasilyevna Baikova, tells us that her native village of Lebedevka was destroyed by Russian troops. The houses were destroyed. She cannot return there. She is looking for her son to take her from the boarding school where she was taken by the Ukrainian military. Son, Maxim, Olga, grandchildren, Nikita and Sachka, please ask for a green corridor. We have nowhere to live in Lebedevka. The village was bombed by our own Russian troops. Thanks to the Ukrainian military, who supported us for three months, and we did not die of hunger. Now I am in a boarding school in Sudza. We were placed here temporarily. And then where? We cannot return to Lebedevka. And at such an age, starting from scratch, is very difficult. Please contact the Russian government, Putin. Let him remember about the Kursk region, that there are many people here at the border. Why did everyone decide that we went missing? Please contact the governor of the Kursk region. Make a statement to him. What is happening to the people? What are they doing here to us? Valentina Vasilyevna laments. She also noted that she was able to survive in such conditions only thanks to the Ukrainian military. Thanks to the Ukrainians. They brought us humanitarian aid and water, absolutely everything. That's why we survived. Thanks to them, I am here before you. Everyone, please ask for a green corridor so that we can be taken out of here. We have nowhere to live here because Russian troops have bombed everything emphasized a resident of Lebedivka, which was destroyed by the Russian troops, Freedom reports. Let us recall that the project, unnecessary to Putin, was created to show life in the frontline Kursk region, which the Russian authorities abandoned without support, not providing residents with the opportunity to evacuate and continuing to shell the civilian population. Чередник Татьяна Сергеевна, Настенька, деточка, мы живы, 
но деревни нашей нет. Так что не переживай за нас. Мы сейчас в Суджи, в интернате. Вывезли нас украинцы. Спасибо им большое. Негде все тут разбомбили абсолютно наши российские войска. Все, спасибо. Footage has been released, showing the evacuation from the siege of 35 servicemen of the Amidoid unit under the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Forces 169th Brigade. Besieged near one of the occupied villages, the fighters resisted until the end and waited for help from their fellow soldiers. The fighters were evacuated from the area without any loss with the support of the armored fighting vehicles of the infantrymen who approached the besieged soldiers from the area under the control of Russian servicemen. A Ukrainian telegram channel that shared the video, pointed to the bravery of Ukrainian soldiers who risked their lives to help their fellow soldiers despite the danger of being attacked by Russians. Special Operations Forces fighters conducted a raid on the enemy rear in the Kursk region. The video was released by the Special Operations Forces Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. It is reported that as a result of successful actions behind enemy lines, SOF soldiers of the Armed Forces of Ukraine destroyed 14 occupiers and captured three. Judging by the footage released on video, the special forces managed to sneak into the forest where the occupiers were located and carry out a surprise attack. Camouflage robes were used for additional camouflage. Taking advantage of the surprise, two occupiers were captured right in their shelter. Another was wounded in the shooting battle and decided to surrender. The use of drones for coordination is a common practice for special operations forces, and not only commercial drones but also specialized military developments are used for this purpose. <laughs> 